children yes, Jesus in the name. mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Speak the blessing. Always speak the blessing. Always speak the blessing. The, the, the devil has enough curses being spoken uh, every minute of every day that if we never did anything but speak blessings all day long, uh, hallelujah, we would just be instruments of God's loosening, God's power, God's authority upon the earth. You see, there's power and there's authority in the blessing. There's power and authority in the blessing. Uh, the job of the priests in the Old Covenant uh, was the same job as you and I in the New Covenant. And that is, we take men to God in prayer, and we bring God to men in prayer. Amen. We touch them. That's why the laying on of hands. Because, why? Because I'm powerful? No. Because God is powerful, and I'm just being that conduit. Do you know what a conduit is? That's from something where the power flows through. Hallelujah. We're being that conduit for the power of God to flow through. God's got the power. We're the conduit. We're the priest. We're connecting heaven to earth. We're touching people that don't know Jesus with Jesus' love, with his power, with his forgiveness. And we're speaking a blessing on them. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And that's what that's our job. Our job is to speak blessings. Amen. Speak blessings everywhere we go. Blessings, blessings, blessings. Because God is a God of blessing. He told the children of Israel, he said, I set before you blessings and curses. He said, now you choose. Well, I choose a blessing. How about you? <laughs> I choose a blessing. Glory be to God. Amen. I choose the blessing. I choose the blessing. Hallelujah. Say that I choose the blessing. I choose the blessing. We, we were going to choose that. And you know, um, uh, someone asked me to do a teaching on uh, generational curses. I can't even remember who asked me to do the teaching. Somebody asked me to do a teaching on generational curses. Oh, it was Vicky. Okay. Well, and so uh, we're going to do a little teaching this morning. May not be something you've heard before. You might not even like it. I don't know. But we're going to get into it anyway. I mean, I don't know everything perfectly, and neither do you. But I'm going to teach you a little bit of things about what the Word says. Because I'm not much too concerned about what some TV preacher or somebody else has to say about it. What I want to know is what does God's Word say about it. See? And so, a, a, a curse... Uh, first of all, is a curse even real? And some people say curses aren't real. There's no such thing as curses. Oh, bless your heart. Bless your heart. Curses are so real. And there's three types of curses that I'll, uh, well, I'll just touch on a little bit today. But curses are real. Now, let me tell you something that's, let me tell you something that's more real than a curse. A blessing is more real than a curse because a blessing will overpower a curse. Amen. Hallelujah. Because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Bless the Lord. <laughs> We're going to be blessers. We're going to reverse every curse that we come in contact with. Amen. Every curse that we come in contact with, we're going to reverse it. Bless the Lord in Jesus' mighty name. The curse is broken. Now, is the curse still on the earth? Yes. But it is not in our lives unless we allow it. And we're not going to allow the curse. Amen. We're not going to allow the generational curse. We're not going to allow a witchcraft curse. And we're not going to allow the curse of the law. That's the three curses. The curse of the law, Deuteronomy 28. The witchcraft curses. Uh, uh, Deuteronomy 18, and then the, uh, what was the other one I said? Uh, yeah. Generational curses, Exodus chapter 20. We're not going to allow any of them. Hallelujah, in Jesus' name. Because when Jesus, what did Jesus said? He said, I give you power and authority. I give you power and authority over all unclean spirits. And I give you power and authority in my name that you shall cast out devils. In my name you shall trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means harm you. Amen. So 
So we're not under the curse. Now, can you get can you be a Christian and, and have a curse on you? Sure, you can be a Christian and have a curse put on you, but it doesn't have but it doesn't have to work. That curse don't have to work against you if you're where you're supposed to be. If you're under the protection of the blood, that curse won't work. But curses are very real. And we're going to look at what the Bible says about it. But, you know, uh, in Galatians 3, 13, it says, Christ hath redeemed us. See that cross? Hallelujah. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse. Being made a curse for us, for as it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth upon a tree. And then the next verse that's not on here says that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles. Guess what's more powerful than the curse? The blessing. And the cross reverses the curse and brings the blessing. You know, I'm thinking about that woman that was bound over for 18 years. She couldn't, she couldn't, uh, she couldn't uh, stand up straight. I can't remember the chapter in the scripture, but she was bowed over. And it said she came to Jesus. And Jesus rebuked the spirit of infirmity off of her. And she was straightened up and she was healed. She was totally delivered. And, and Jesus said to her, Ought not this woman, this daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound, lo, these 18 years be loosed on the Sabbath day? See, the, the silly Pharisees were, You shouldn't be healing her on the Sabbath day. And he said, She's been bound for 18 years. Shouldn't she be let free? Amen. She was bound by Satan for 18 years. And I loosed her from that spirit of infirmity. The spirit of infirmity can affect your physical body. I've, I've, I've spoken to spirits that have come off of people and physical ailments left them. Did you know that the devil can bring a physical ailment to your body? Amen. You rebuke the devil. You rebuke a sickness and disease. I was talking to a man this week, bless his heart. And uh, he was telling me that he had uh, cancer. And I said, well, rebuke that cancer in the name of Jesus and so on and so forth. And I was giving him some scriptures and he said, well, if it's God's will, I will. I said, well, you know, uh, it is God's will. If it wasn't God's will to rebuke cancer, then he wouldn't have said that Jesus came and healed all who were oppressed of the devil. Acts 10, 38. Let me just quote it to you, Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. See, the devil oppresses us with sickness. The devil oppresses us with depression. He oppresses us with, uh, with temptation. He oppresses us with all kind of things if we let him. And we just got to get to the place where we stop letting him. Amen. He's under our feet, and it's time for us to just hold his head there in Jesus' name. There's just many ways that uh, the curse can come. You know, and, and the whole generational curse thing. Uh, we've talked about this. People have asked me all the time, Pastor, is there generational curses? Well, yes and no. Yes, there is, and no, there's not. <laughs> there is, and I'll explain that to you a little bit, but you got them, this little group down here. Grandmother, grandmother, grandfather, great grandfather, father, son, blah, blah, so on and so forth. And then up here we got all these things. Possessiveness, anger, uncontrolled tongue, rebellion, critical spirit, sexual sins, fears, covenant breaking, mental illness, substance addictions, occult involvement, false religion, physical diseases, victim mentality, emotional issues, word curses. Those things happen to people. Every family ha usually has something, and some, some families have the whole lot of it. How much ever you let in, and how much ever your dad let in, or somebody else let in, and then you just carried it on, well, is that a curse? Well, yes and no. It's a curse if nobody ever repents and leaves that demonic trail 
and that de demonic loop and connection. But if somebody will repent and break that with the blood of Jesus, then the curse is removed. Now you have the problem of changing your stinking patterns. So the power of the devil's broken off of it, but guess what? You're so used to doing it, you keep doing it. I was thinking about this this week. Somebody was asking me, I don't know why they was asking me about generational curses, and, and I, they said, do you think that you've had any generational curses in your life? I said, well, that I had some, and I, if I want to yield to them, I can sure do it. <laughs> you know? And I got to thank them. And Lord, forgive me. I'm just going to tell you. So, I have family members. Parental units. And they, uh, <laughs> they, uh, uh, they, well, especially one of them, when, when they got really mad, they could do this cussing streak. Now, the cussing streak started out with this one word here. And it went bing, bing, bang, bong, bing, bang, bong, bong, bong. And there was a whole line of them. And it just went in this, it was just almost like a little song, you know. It was a whole bunch of cuss words. And it just all come out. And, you know, and there was a, usually a lot of volume with it. Just combo this. Combo. It was a combo. You know, a combo pack. Like when you get go to Burger King and get a combo, or you can just get a single. This ain't no single. This is a whole combo with the dessert and everything. A happy meal. And I'm telling you. And so when I get in a situation, when I get in a situation, if I get very mad, now I'm not just normal, upset, or aggravated, but if I get very mad, guess what I can do? I'm not, I don't do it. But it comes to my mind. The whole combo pack. The whole thing. I hear it in my mind. And you know what? I and I because I don't I don't do that. But you know what? I'm tempted to. That those thoughts come and I just have to Jesus name, Jesus name, Jesus name, Jesus name. I'm not going I'm not gonna yield to that. I don't have to yield to that. I don't have to punch the wall. I do not have to pull the telephone out of the wall. I do not have to hit someone. Okay? And I've seen things like this in my childhood and in my life. You understand me? Uh, and so, and I don't have to get drunk. And I don't have to do so and so about all these different things. But those temptations and those, those thoughts are there. Those thoughts are there to throw something. To throw something, to pull something out of the wall, to knock a hole in something. Because that's really going to help the situation. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Is that a generational curse? It is if I don't repent of that anger. Amen. And that bitterness. And break that. And then Jesus, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, nope. That might have been in my childhood, but that's not me. And I, I'm telling you, it's amazing uh, how many people that we dealt with with sexual addictions and sexual issues and problems and so on and so forth, and then you you find out about their childhood. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then you find out they were abused. Or they found the magazine hidden somewhere, so on and so forth. And then, you know what I'm saying? then it gets locked in their brain. And the devil throws that at them as a temptation. Well, is that a generational curse? I think there's a demon that goes with that. I, I personally do. I think there's a, there's a spirit that the Bible describes as a familiar spirit. Have you heard the term in the Bible? Several places, familiar spirit. You know what familiar comes from? Family. It's familiar with you and it's in your family. It was with you, and it tries to, it was with your dad, it was maybe with his dad, and that same demon tries to follow you. And you know what you have to do? You just have to say, you are not welcome in this house. Amen. You are not welcome in this mind. And it's just like, I went to Chuck's yesterday, Chuck and Jerry's, and uh, I blessed their house, and went into the front door, and went the back door, and went into every single room and spoke a blessing in that house. 
the blessing overpowers the curse. Amen. So every time the devil tries to throw something at you, you speak the opposite. Amen? Amen. When he tries to control you with one thing or another, bless the Lord. Well, my whole family just has a generational curse. We're just all fat. It's just a generational curse. I saw a family with a generational curse at the buffet the other day. <laughs> now, I'm not making fun of it because I honestly, really, truly, I'll be, I'll be honest with you, I'm just telling you. I felt sorry for them. There were four, five hundred pounds. Three, four, five hundred pounds. And, and when you saw what they ate, you knew why they were three, four, five hundred pounds. You know what I'm saying? Well, is that a curse? Well, it, it is. But you learn the pattern. The family cooks too much fat food, fatty food. They don't cook enough vegetables and fruit. Amen. It don't take a rocket scientist to tell you that now. You have to change the pattern. Now, you can just say, in the name of Jesus, I break that generational curse of being overweight in my family, and in Jesus' name, I'm not going to be overweight anymore. Go straight and get a double cheeseburger, big fries, big gulp, and two, three Snickers bars, and that generational curse for her, and I'm working on that. You've got to change a pattern. You've got to change a pattern. Bless the Lord. Are you listening to me? Is there demons? Yes. Do they tempt us? Yes. Can we rebuke them? Yes. But then, after we rebuke them, we just got to change our pattern. <laughs> Amen. Are you listening to me? I'm saying we have the power and authority to change our patterns. Do you know what helps? You know, uh, let me quote you a scripture from Hosea 4.6. Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. Do you all know that verse? It says, My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And he says, Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I rejected thee. God, in other words, if we don't do... I thought there was a rooster in here. <laughs> if we don't do the things of knowledge, then you're not going to get the benefit. It just amazes me, these, these young couples that come to me and they don't get along. They're fussing, they're fighting, they're at each other's throats, power struggle, one thing after the other. One tries to dominate the other, the other one tries to dominate the other one. And I give them... I'll give them uh, my Marriage on the Rock seminar. Or I'll give them my, uh, what's that other series? Something about honor and something. And uh, to listen to. And then, Gary, they'll call me back two weeks later. And one of them's crying. And they're just having terrible trouble. trouble. Just, oh my gosh. Oh, oh, oh. I said, did you listen to that video on the video? No, we just haven't got to it. I said, well, I, haven't got, I, can't, I don't have time to talk to you. You're not doing what I told you to do. Amen. I'm trying to give you knowledge, and you're not taking the knowledge. Hello? This is like going to the doctor. You, get, you go to the doctor, he sticks a swab down your throat, you get strep. Well, you got strep throat. The culture come back strep. All right, well, here's, here's some amoxicillin clatamine. Take that home and take you two doses of 600 or 875 milligrams a day and uh, it should go away. Bless the Lord. Well, then you go home and you don't take it. Or maybe you take one. One. Can you spell stupid? Can you? Stupid is... He gave, you the <laughs> he gave you the prescription and you didn't take it. Hello? Hello? Pinch your neighbor and say hello. Amen. Hello. 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 you got to do what the book says to do. Well, it ain't working. Well, are you doing it? Are you doing your part? Well, it isn't working. 
Do, this, do what your part is. And sometimes go the extra mile. Amen, brother. That's exactly right. But do what the book says. Do what the knowledge says. Get you some knowledge. Get you some knowledge on diet if you got a problem with something. You got a health issue, study up on the health issue. Don't let the please don't let the doctors tell you everything to do, people. Read a little on your own. <coughs> study. Read. Find out what some kind of natural things might help. Are you listening to me? What? Yes, find some, some reputable resources out there and, and, and see what's going on. You know, many of you have called me. You said, oh, Pastor Ken, I, I was getting dizzy and I passed out and this and that and the other happened, so on and so forth. First thing I ask you, and some of you probably can attribute it, first thing I say is, are you on any new medications? That's the absolute first question I ever ask you. Are you on any new medications? Well, let me see. Well, yeah, I am. I just started, well... Go read the side effects. Oh, I didn't read the side effects. Well, duh. <laughs> Amen? Go read them. Maybe you're taking too much, or maybe you shouldn't be taking that one. Amen. Just because the doctor prescribed it, you remember, he's practicing medicine. Practicing. He's not perfect. He's trying his best, and he's doing his very best. I don't mean he's got it down yet, or you listen to me. So, knowledge, 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 knowledge. Arm yourself with knowledge. Hosea 4, 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. knowledge. Don't, don't let these manifestations of curses and all these different areas in your family and in your personal life, don't let them hold you back because you'll be set free by the truth. Did you know Jesus said the truth will set you free? You want to be set free? Well, you need to learn the truth then. Amen? Amen? Sometimes the truth is cast the devil out. Mm -hmm. Amen? And sometimes Amen. it's just as simple as that. Cast the devil out. Sometimes it's just that simple. Amen. But other times it's cast the devil out, and now you've got to learn a new pattern. But if you've been doing it wrong, Amen? You've got to learn a new way. Well, anyway, we're moving on. So curse or blessing, the choice is yours. <clears throat> We're choosing the blessing. Let's look at some curses for a second. Where the scripture tells us that there's curses. Deuteronomy chapter 18. Talk a little bit about curses for a second. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. De -de -de Deuteronomy. Okay, verse chapter 18. Let's start at verse 10. 18, verse 10. Now, let's see. There we go. There shall not be found. All right, let's go to verse 9. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. <laughs> What's an abomination? Abomination means an uncleanness, an unclean thing, okay? There's tons of them. But there shall not be found. These are some of the abominations in the Old Testament. Uh, we don't see repeated in the New Testament. Like, you know, you can't eat shrimp and so on and so forth, or can't eat bacon. We don't see that repeated in the New Testament. Is it still better for you to not eat shrimp and bacon? Probably. If you gain some knowledge, probably those things are a little higher in fat and so on and so forth. It's not as good for you. But that, doesn't, but that doesn't mean it's a commandment, however shrimp is. And a shrimp wrapped in, wrapped in bacon, that's the ultimate blessing. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> but in the New Testament, we're not commanded. Well, first of all, I don't know if some of you even realize this. You're not a Jew. You are not a Jew. The Jewish law was given to the Jews. Now, we're New Testament Christians, but you know what? We're still, we still need to follow the Ten Commandments. We still need to obey the things that are the moral law as much as we possibly can. But if you want some bacon and shrimp, oh, I think God will bless it. In fact, Paul in the New Testament said, 
that everything is to be received if it's prayed over and it will be blessed by the word of God in prayer. So when you eat something, pray over it and it's blessed by the word of God in prayer. Now, a little side note. They had some scientists when I worked for Kenneth Copeland's. They had some scientists come to our, uh, the, the, out, out there to the, the mountain where we had our uh, Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And uh, they were scientists and they had these machines and they were electronic and they hooked them up to your body and then they hooked them up to your food. And so on and so forth. It was kind of a strange thing. But they showed how that the body would receive certain foods and would receive them and use them and then how some, some foods wouldn't be received very well by the body. And it showed how the body reacted electronically and chemically uh, to, and how the brain did, to that food. Well, Brother Copeland wanted to do a test. So he said, I, I want you to pray. Uh, to not pray, but just eat this food. Don't pray over it, just eat it. And they looked and so and so forth, and then your body received the food this well and, and uh, assimilated it this well, and, you know, and, and it responded well to it. Or how well it is, 60% or whatever, I don't know. And then they prayed over the food and ate the food, and the percentage went up like into the 90s. Amen. Because they blessed the food. Don't tell me there's not power in the blessing. There's power in the blessing. Amen. Bless your food. Amen. Amen. You know, I had a pastor years ago. Me and, me and Michael had a pastor. Mike and Carol, Gary. <coughs> had, and uh, maybe some others. Mary Roger's not here today. Had a Karen, had a pastor. And he said, when you take an aspirin, you pray over that aspirin. That's true. When you take your blood pressure medicine, you pray over that blood pressure medicine. Probably even more than your food. <laughs> Probably even more than your food. But do it all. Amen. Pray over it. You take chemotherapy, you pray over that chemotherapy. Mm. You take radiation, you pray over that radiation. Mark 16, 17, and 18, no deadly poison. It's going to hurt me in Jesus' name. It's only going to do me good. It's only going to kill the cancer. It's not going to hurt me in Jesus' name. I thank you for your divine protection. See the power of the blessing? See the power of the blessing? Speak that blessing out. You know what blessings and curses are? Words. Amen. Blessings and cursings are words. Do you know every word carries something with it? Now some, some words are some words are benign. They're, they're not, not much to them. If and 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 but and so on and forth. But tone, <coughs> anger, love. See, if I speak to you a, a word in love, or if I speak that same word to you in anger, mm -hmm. I'm sending something to you. Mm -hmm. I'm sending a blessing or I'm sending a curse. Be careful that you send a blessing everywhere you go. Because Jesus said, curse not, but bless. You remember him saying that? Hallelujah. In James chapter 3, it says, out of the same mouth come blessings and curses. Oh, my brethren, this ought not to be so. Amen. This ought not to be so. Can a good tree bear bad fruit? Can a bad tree bear good fruit? He said. Amen. If there's a lot of bad stuff coming out of your mouth, you need to go to the altar. You need to go to the cross. You need to get the root cleaned up. Amen? Amen? And say, God, clean me up. So there's blessings coming out of this fruit tree. So there's blessings coming out. Hallelujah. To feed the nations. See, God wants our fruit to bless everybody around us. Amen. To heal them. Our words ought to bring. The Bible says the words are, are life and death. The Bible says words are healing. Amen. So speak a word of healing. Speak a word of blessing. Well, anyway, where am I at? I never I didn't got very far, did I? Oh, hallelujah. 18 verse uh, 9. When thou art come to the land, the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or daughter to pass through the fire. Now, Moloch was a god, false god in those days. And Moloch... The statue of Moloch 
uh, was a, a statue of a god that was, and he would stand like this, uh, with his arms like this. And behind him was a huge furnace, and he was heated up super, fire, uh, super hot. And people, these false pagan people, would take their babies, and they put them in the arms of Moloch. And the baby, the, the, he was so hot that when they got in the arms of Moloch, they just, he just, they just burst into flames. And they were an offering to the God of God Moloch. Pitiful, isn't it? And you see why God said, I don't want you to learn to do after these idol worshiping nations. Amen. Uh, thou shalt uh, not be found among you anyone who makes his son or daughter to pass through the fire or uses divination. Divination is witchcraft. Or an observer of times. Or an enchanter. Or a witch. See, now I'm being, I'll be honest with you. I open my fortune cookie and I look at it. I read my fortune cookie. And our family has, has made a tradition out of making a fun time out of that. And we, mm -hmm. we kind of are silly with it. Mm -hmm. You know. But I don't believe fortune cookies. I believe my fortune comes from right here. Amen. This is where our fortune comes from. We, uh, the fortune cookie might tell you one thing, but that Jesus has greater blessings than any fortune cookie. Amen. And I'm going by Jesus' blessings. Amen. Amen. And verse 11. Or a charmer. Or a consulter with familiar spirits. Remember I was talking to you uh, earlier about, about familiar spirits? Spirits uh, in, in families. Uh, yeah, there's lots of, there's some stories in the Old Testament about familiar spirits that come up. I've, he I've heard people tell stories. Well, uh, this, uh, in fact, the revival of evil that me and Michael was talking about last week. Uh, this lady had this her her dead aunt come up out of the fireplace, walked over to her, started talking to her. Her dead aunt did, and and uh, said, "Honey, take my hand." And as soon as she took her hand, the hand turned into a claw, and she she manifested as a demon. <coughs> so don't 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 be fooled. <coughs> People that have died are in heaven or in hell. They might be able to visit you in a dream or so on and so forth, but they're in heaven or hell. They can't just be, they're not traveling up and down. God might let uh, you see your mama on your deathbed because you might be so close to that realm. See, when you're about to die, or some of these people that are in these uh, comas and so on and so forth, they're so close to the other realm, they can kind of see over into the other realm. But the other realm doesn't usually hardly ever come in contact with us. What you're, have, what you're seeing is disguising demons. Demons disguise themselves as people that you used to love. And it's called familiar spirits. It's just like this lady. If that wasn't her aunt, when she actually saw what it really was, it was a hideous looking type of thing. So be careful with that because that's necromancy, which is the next thing it says. Or a wizard or a necromancer. Necromancer means calling up the dead. You don't sit around the table and table tip. You don't sit around the table and play with the Ouija board and call for the You can't be doing that. You're gonna there's a movie out there called uh, Ouija board, I think, or something, or a devil board or something. I forgot what it was called. Well, first of all, I ain't gonna watch the movie, but uh, but it's more real than you think. It is more real than you think. I had to cast the demons out of a little boy who got a demon in, that came into his house and into his room from playing with a stupid Ouija board. Amen. And I have heard more than one story of people that threw the Ouija board away and burnt it and screams come up out of the Ouija board. So there is such a thing as the devil and demons and evil spirits. And this uh, uh, Ouija board is nothing more than a channeling device to channel from the spirit world into our world the wrong spirits that we don't want. That's right. Amen. So stay away from it. Stay away from it. And may I say, stay away from it. 
For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. Because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. So, are there witchcraft curses? Yes, oh my goodness. I'll tell you a little story. How many of you know my real good buddy, David Aberton? Come down from St. Louis. There's several of you that know David Aberton. David is such a good friend. and He was a missionary. And he was doing some missions work. In, uh, I believe he was in England. And when he was there, he ran across this man who was a, a, a black man from South Africa. And he, he led him to Jesus. He prayed with him and he got saved. The man got saved. And he said, wouldn't you like to receive the Holy Spirit? And the man said, I sure would. I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So David began to pray for him to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And he prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. And there was just a terrible block. The man just could not get past it. He, and he said, I, I just can't receive. I'm just, I just can't. I don't feel nothing. I can't receive nothing. I'm just, I just got this block going. And David asked him, he said, sir, he said, have you ever had a curse put on you? And he goes, well, yeah, I'm from South Africa. You know, where, 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 I don't know if it's South Africa. There's one of the African nations, but I don't remember which one for sure. And so he was like, yeah. And he said, oh, well, that's what our problem is. And so David anointed him with oil and began to plead the blood of Jesus over him and to rebuke that witchcraft curse. He said, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus, and he cast that curse off of him. Well, I wish it, I could tell you that it happened instantly, but it didn't. A little at a time, what had happened was uh, they had put a voodoo curse on him. And somebody had made a voodoo doll out of this man. And they had put little pieces of glass in the voodoo doll. And David Everton told me that over the period of a few weeks, these pieces of glass, uh, he said, his friend would call him and say, huh? There's a piece of glass that just, just come out of my, my, my skin just opened up and a piece of glass come out. I said, and he said, well, just keep thanking Jesus for your deliverance. And finally, after a period of time, the last of that glass come out of him and he started speaking in tongues and praising Jesus. He was filled with the Holy Ghost. That curse was fully broken off of him. Now, I don't know why it didn't happen. I don't have all the answers. I don't know why it didn't happen instantly. But it, that's just the way it happened. Hallelujah. I had the same thing happen with a young man who was involved. His name was uh, John Coward. And I was over at the Mennonite church. I was a pastor in a little Mennonite church over in Kansas. And John Coward came in. He wanted to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. And I said, well, come to my office and I'll anoint you and we'll pray. And I, and I laid hands on him. We prayed for him to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And, whoa, nothing was, not only was nothing happening, but something was happening that wasn't so good. And he, I said, John, what's going on? And I said, something's wrong. He said, well, I said, what, what are you thinking? He said, I'm thinking I'd like to kill you. I said, oh, well, it could be we're dealing with a demon here. <laughs> My keen discernment picked right up on me. <laughs> and I, I, I said, what do you mean? He said, well, the thought just come to me just to stand up and just to, because he was a, a master at karate and jujitsu and all this kind of stuff. He said, it just, it just, the thought just come for me to stand up and just kick you right in the throat. Just kick you. I said, well, sounds like the devil to me. Let's get rid of that demon. So I would begin to talk to that demon, command that demon to come out of him. And he began to get a little bit of freedom, you know. And he, I said, is it better? Yeah, so on and so forth. And, you know, and we just, I just rebuking this and, and he was repenting of this and that and the other. I said, now have you, I said, tell me what you did when you was working with this sensei. He said, well, we'd kneel down in front of this idol and then we'd kneel down, we'd light these candles and we'd kneel down in front of this idol and, and, we, and we'd bless it. And we'd take an offering to it. I said, well, you got to renounce that right now. So he said, I renounce it in the name of Jesus. We renounce, we renounce it in the name of Jesus. I I sever my ties with that idol and with that whole scene. Now, there's nothing wrong with the karate part of it, karate and all the exercise part of it, but when you start down, down to an idol 
and you get into the religion part of it, that's when it becomes demonic. And you've got to stay away from that part of it. So we prayed for him. So he's better, he's better, he's better. I said, John, is it gone? He said, well, he said, I, the thoughts are out of my mind. He said, but my feet, he said, it's in my feet. And that's where he did most of his stuff with his feet, kicking and stuff and so on and so forth, you know. He said, my feet are on fire. He said, I, I feel like a demon is in my feet. I said, well, I don't doubt it. I said, Lord, what should I do? The Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, go get a pan of water and put anointing oil in that water and put communion wine in that water and wash his feet. Now, in, in uh, however long has it been, 32 years of ministry, being an ordained minister, uh, I've never done that before. Never done it since. But I did. I went and got some water. I got some anointing oil. I got some communion wine. Put it in there and washed his feet. And he was instantly delivered of that, that demon in his feet. And he began to speak in tongues and praise the Lord. He went to Bible college, where I did at Raymond, and he is working with a missionary in the former Soviet Union today. Amen. Serving the Lord all over the countries mm -hmm. with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're greater ministries. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. So, it, our curse is real. Is the devil real? Yeah, you can't be, see, you can't be down, down yourself and worshiping idols. You've got God is number one in your life. And that, now that's witchcraft curses. I call that witchcraft curses. Then there's generational curses. Let's look at Exodus for just a second. And we're not, I can see right now, we're not going to be able to finish this. But we'll get on to finish this. And then uh, <clears throat> we're going to teach you a little bit. And then in a couple of uh, Sundays, uh, now next week, Lord, you've got, we've got our revival with uh, our little Korean girl, Sun Steve. Hallelujah. That's going to be fun. So that's Sunday morning and Sunday night, mark your calendars, and plan to be here both, both services next Sunday. But we're going to come back and finish this, and then I've had a request to teach on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So we're going to do a teaching on the baptism of the Holy Ghost and the power of the Holy Ghost. Everybody needs the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Everybody, everybody, everybody. Yes, Paul said, I would that you all spake in tongues. So everybody needs it. We need the baptism, we need the gifts, we need the tongues, we need the prophecy, we need the healing, we need it all. And we might as well just have the hand, the loin, the whole thing. Just like Jimmy needs sausage. Glory to God. Amen? Amen. Some of you don't remember that uh, commercial. Um, Jimmy Dean sausage. The hand, the loin, the whole thing. So we want the whole thing that God has. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. So, in Exodus chapter, and i got to hurry, because uh, this is fun. I'm having a good time teaching this. So, Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20. And we're not, I don't think we'll even get to finish this, but we'll just touch on for just a minute. And uh, this is the Ten Commandments. As I've said so many times, this is not the Ten Suggestions. This is the Ten Commandments. Some people think they're the Suggestions. They're not the Suggestions. They're the Commandments. And so, you know, there's, uh, let's look in verse 5 and 6. Well, we have to, no, we have to get before 5. Let's just go on. Let's just start in verse 1. And God spake all these words, saying, remember who he spoke them to? Moses, up on the mountain. Amen. The fire come out of God. Cut this right into the stone. Bless the Lord. I am the Lord God, which hath brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other God before me. Amen. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or in the earth beneath, or that is in the water below. And thou shalt not bow down thyself nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. Amen. 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 Now, it's going to sound mean, but it isn't. I'm going to finish this. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children 
unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Generation. Say generation. generation. Third and fourth generation. <coughs> what do you mean? Well, that sounds mean. That sounds mean. Well, it would be mean if you didn't know what it says in the Hebrew. I'll explain to you what it says in the Hebrew. In the Hebrew, it says visiting the iniquity. The word iniquity is the word bent. Is the word crook. Is the word turn. Iniquity is not necessarily a sin. Iniquity is a bend that you have. A bent towards something. You, you know what I'm talking about? Something, you just, just have a bend towards something. A warp. You did. It's a warp. And you picked it up maybe from your father. And then you picked it up and then you gave it to your son or daughter. And then they picked it up and they gave it. What is it? That's a bent. So we're, what are we going to do? We're going to repent of that bend. We're not going to worship other gods and other idols. And we're going to break that bend. We're going to straighten that bend out and make it go straight towards God. What you got wrote that real quick, Brother Dave? I'm just thinking, in the English you said, to the, third and fourth, to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. Of those who accept Jesus, we're no longer hate him. The That's so good. Thank you for bringing that out. Uh, let's see. That is verse 5. Yes. Uh, visiting iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Oh, when you, when you hate God, Oh, you, all, all you do is just pass hate on. Hate on to everybody. Hate, 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 hate. Hey, our God's a God of love. I'm passing love on Amen? Amen? Bless the Lord. Now watch this, though. I want you to watch. So this is, so we're going to talk about generational curses a little bit more. But watch how God is. And showing mercy, say mercy, mercy. unto thousands, say thousands, of them that love me, and keep my commandments. His mercy is a thousand times greater than his judgment. Hallelujah. He said three or four generations. Three or four generations of them that hate me, there's a curse. But you know, all you have to do is stop that curse right there. If your dad hated God and your mom hated God or one of them did, and you got that on you, but then you got stuck saved, you just saved you, your children, your children's children, and you saved thousands of them. God's mercy is a thousand times more powerful than his judgment. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. The mercy of God is a thousand times greater. But what do we got to do? We got to step in and break that curse. How do we do it? Repent. Have no other gods before me. Don't bow down and worship him. And don't hate God but love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Well, we'll look a little bit more on this later, and uh, we'll look at some, some people in the Bible who had that generational curse and how God can break that off of all of us. Let's stand together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's just lift our hand to the Lord and just thank Him for our salvation. Father, thank You for our salvation. Thank You for the blood of Jesus. Lord, we renounce every darkness of our family, of our childhood, of our situations. And Lord, we just commit it all to You, Lord. We commit it all to You. And we thank You, Father, in Jesus' name for blessing us. Thank You, Lord, for a generational blessing. We are blessed. Our children are blessed. Our grandchildren are blessed. Our great-grandchildren are blessed. They're blessed with healing. They're blessed with strength. They're blessed with peace. They're blessed with prosperity. Father, we speak the blessing in Jesus' mighty name. And we thank you and praise you, Father God, that we're going to be holy people walking with you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And we give you the